Today's topic is population interactions. First, we have to uh, focus on the community. What the community is, basically, uh, many different populations uh, live in the same geographical area. The species are co-occurring and they interact with each other. The interactions uh, between organisms can be interspecific. It's in its name. Inter means between different uh, organisms among two or more species for the same limited resource. It can be the prey, the food, light, water, uh, something like that. On the picture, the hawk is uh, praying for the mouse as well as the owl uh, need to, uh, needs to eat uh, a mouse for as a food source. The other type is the intraspecific. Intraspecific. The intraspecific is among the same species. Owl uh, try to capture the mouse, and I can draw another owl in here. Just try to catch the same uh, mouse for food. That would be an intraspecific. Like these two animals, they fight over something uh, like water or food or during mating season for the female organisms. One of the interspecific interactions uh, is uh, the competition. This is number one. Competition is for a shared limited resource, basically. The species compete for the same resources, food, water, prey. Different species have different ecological niches. The niche, uh, niche uh, is the sum of all the biotic and abiotic resources that an organism needs to survive. The air, water, living place, prey, and also its uh, place in the ecosystem as a predator and uh, as well as prey. The result for competition can be competitive exclusion. That means that two different species, for example, zebra mussel and different uh, type of mussels in the lakes of the United States now, two different species compete for the same resource and one of the species will die out eventually or they have to move uh, to a different location because one species is pushing the other species out of its original uh, habitat slash niche. The other type of competition is, and this is really uh, fair enough, is the niche partitioning. Sharing the same, uh, try to uh, divide up the niche among themselves. Niche partitioning. Dividing up the resources. For example, these uh, birds divide up the tree where they will live and they will have their food sources, their habitats, living area, and nesting area, and mating area as well. The last one is going to be from competition is evolutionary response. That means it takes time to happen, and it's through natural selection. Basically, this bird's beak is kind of long and pointy, and it can get into deep flowers to get the nectar. So this is probably because of the competition uh, between 
different species. During competition, both species suffer. For the com competitive exclusion, one of them has to move totally in a different place or will die out. Then each partitioning, they suffer a little bit too because the, the niche is not theirs only, but they divided it up. An evolutionary response who couldn't adopt to that situation, to that area, uh, to that circumstances would die out. The second type of uh, living together, interacting with each other in a community is mutualism. Mutualism is for that means that both species benefit from the relationship. For example, the bee and the flower. The bee gets, it, uh, gets its pollen, the food, and the flower being, being pollinated, fertilization can take place, so seed production can take place. Now, the mutualism can be obligate, Obligate. That means they got to live together. They are so depending on each other. The termite, our favorite termite, and the protozoa, the protist inside of the termite that can break down the cellulose into glucose, and the termite can utilize the glucose as a food source, an energy source for, the, uh, for itself. Or it can be facult uh, facultative. When human and a dog, they live together, both of them benefits from that. The dog doesn't have to hunt, really uh, got taken care by humans and the human also benefits from that like having a good time have a part uh, kind of a animal to live with so it's it's really good for both of the organisms but it's not necessary they don't depend on each other like the termite on the protozoa as well as the protozoa depends on the termite also because the protozoa cannot eat the wood it doesn't have the uh, jaw like the termite has. All right, moving on to herbivory. Herbivory is actually this is number four. Herbivory uh, is plants contain numerous defenses against herbivores, thorns, spikes. Uh, the thorns and the spikes and special uh, and sometimes toxins it's kind of a coevolution though coevolution coevolution means that for example here the pear cactus have thorns but the heavily hovelinas tongue became so thick and resistance of the thorn, so or the spikes, the javelina can eat the pear a cactus because of its tongue is really kind of very thick because of that. So it really uh, not that much to say basically. So the plant suffers especially if the herbivore will eat the plant. Predation. This is number five. Predation is an organism depends on the other organism for energy supply. Beneficial for the predator, harmful for the prey, definitely. Protection against predators. Now, what happens? The, uh, the butterfly is uh, a prey, and the predator can be a bird, but Presenting camouflage and camouflage of the prey, the gray butterfly on the gray tea, uh, tree bark 
makes the butterfly invisible, so the butterfly really blends in. The chemical defense is another protection against predators. For example, the small frog, the dart frog, it's poisonous. Well, it tells its predator that, well, don't eat me because I'm dangerous because of its uh, very distinctive uh, colors and very alarming colors. Parasites, that's the sex that relationship. During uh, that relationship, one organism is harmed, definitely, and the other one gains benefits. For example, let's go at the bottom of the pictures, the brachnid wasp, might just seem a very innocent wasp, but it's not that innocent. It's actually, it's really good for us. Wasp uh, lay its eggs on a caterpillar's surface. Now, the eggs stay on the surface. As, as they grow, they take nutrients from the caterpillar, and when they hatch, they start to eat the caterpillar as they're first essential food. So they destroy the caterpillar, the caterpillar uh, that eats tomato plants. So it's really, really good in one way for the farmers because, because they can use the brachnoid, uh, brachnid uh, wasp as a pest controller. Also, let's mention the mosquito mosquito as a parasite. The, I guess these are the lice, hair lice, the different stages, and they are uh, parasites also. They like to live with us in our hair and take our blood. We don't get any benefit from that. They are really pathogenic. And the aphids on the flowers, they eat the flower, they suck the sap from the flower and the juice from the flower and the stem so it's it's really bad for the plants but good for the aphids the seventh uh, immensalism is another relationship immensalism is probably we would not notice in uh, for the first time for one species, for one organism, it does not matter. For example, the, for the cattle, for the cows, it doesn't matter. They walk on the grass. It doesn't matter for the cows. But for the other organisms, for the grass, they got trampled over. I mean, they got just uh, stepped on and they got killed, uh, some of them, because of the hoofs. It's, uh, it can be harmful. So the classic example is when we walk uh, through the grassy area in some place and we step on the grass and we destroy the, uh, some of the grass. The last one is the commensalism. Commensalism is when one of the organisms benefit for example, check those egrets. These are all birds all around the egrets. It's really beneficial for them. And check the cow. For the cow, it doesn't matter. Now, the egrets are really like to eat bugs, the, especially the flies. The cow will have droppings after itself. And the egg and flies got on the cow, uh, cow poop, and uh, the egrets will start to eat the flies and the bugs, whatever they, these uh, organic materials, uh, 
Mm, what is the word? Attract. Okay, that's it, I guess, for today.